Welcome to my lecture on introducing you guys to z-scores. Here I'm going to demonstrate to you what a z-score is and how it calculated and uh, what it actually tells you in terms of information. So what is a z-score? Uh, how do you calculate it and what does it tell you? Well, uh, there's been a lot of definitions on z-scores, but the best way to see it is to look at it from, a, uh, from an example from the empirical distribution that you guys looked at previously. So just so that I could recall the empirical distribution, the empirical distribution says, uh, or empirical rule, uh, the empirical rule says that uh, if I have the mean and the standard deviation of a population, then 68% uh, of the data falls within one standard deviation away from the average for any given experiment that is normally distributed. Uh, it says that 95% of the data usually falls within two standard deviation away from the average and 99.7% of the data falls within three standard deviations away from the average. So that's the empirical rule. And uh, it's just an application of uh, standard deviation. And that's just exactly what it tells you. So it says, so basically it says if the average, let's say we're talking about the IQ, and if I know if the national average IQ is 100 with a standard deviation of 15, then the empirical rule, and I'm just reminding you of that because then I'll construct the z-scores on that. So the empirical rule says if your average is 100 and your standard deviation is 15, then if you walk one standard deviation on each direction, to the left and to the right, and this is one standard deviation to the right, which is plus, this is one standard deviation to the left, which is minus. And by the way, each standard deviation is 15 units. That's what you gotta keep in mind. So if I go one standard deviation away from the average, that means I'm going away by 15 units, which is called one. See, standard deviation for different experiments is different. For an IQ, if its standard deviation is 15, then every step is 15. If you had a GPA experiment or something and the standard deviation was 0.2, then every standard deviation would have been 0.2. So the standard deviation is completely dependent on the value and what it is, and whatever it is, each unit is considered that. So if the standard deviation is 38, then each one of these steps is, will be 38 units. But now, since the standard deviation is 15, one step will be 15 units, so it'll bring you to 115. So that's one standard deviation away. And the way you would write it with formulas would be mu plus one standard deviation. That means 100 plus 15, which is 115. Then if you go one standard deviation to the left, meaning 15 units to the left, it will bring you to 85. That's mu minus one standard deviation. So basically the, what the empirical rule says, it says that 68% of the population have IQs between 85 and 115. That's what it says. That's it. And then it says, if you go out one more standard deviation, so then you go out one more standard deviation in both directions. Then the second one, this is one more. So now you're 15 plus another 15. Now you're 30 units away, so you get to 130. And on the other side, you get to 70. So, and this is mu minus twice the standard deviation. And this is mu plus twice the standard deviation. And there you have it. So it says that, it says that, 95% of the population is usually within two standard deviations. So for our experiment, now that you've constructed this uh, line, you could see that there's a 95% chance or 95% of the population have IQs between 70 and 130. And then for the last one, we just go out one more. So let me just use a different color. Let me just use green. So if I go one more out, now I'm going out three standard deviations, so I'd be what, 145, that's mu plus three standard deviation. And this is mu minus three standard deviation, and this one, that'll bring you to what, 55, and it'll bring you to 145. So basically what that tells you is, that I'll do red again, it says 99.7% of the population, which is pretty much the whole thing, falls within three standard deviation away from the mean and it captures IQs from 55 to 145. That's it, that's the empirical rule and that's what it tells you about the distribution of IQs about the average for this particular experiment. Now, what's a z-score? Well, let's just let's play a game here so you can see exactly what it is. If I put my pen at certain different points on this number line, let's say I put it there, I put it here, I put it here, I put it here, 
I even put it inside the center, right in the middle, at the dot itself. You know, these are all the different dots I'm making in, in green. I'm wondering if these dots were positions you were standing on. If these dots were position that you were standing on, what do I mean? Let me just clean it up here a little bit so I could, let me just get rid of these. There you go. So, all right. So let's uh, look at uh, what the empirical distribution would say about uh, where these points are. Actually, let me just have these points because you kind of want to see them. So let me just do it with it. So if, I st if I'm standing here, how far away am I from the center, from right here? How far away am I from the center in terms of standard deviation? Now, I know I'm 15 units away, but remember, 15 units is only one standard deviation for this particular experiment. So my actual position, so-called standard position, that's what they call it, is actually one. Because why? Because I am at this point, let me make it a little thicker, because at this point I am one standard deviation away from the mean. Now let's, let's look at the other ones. Uh, let's look at, for example, what if I'm standing here? How many standard deviations am I away from the average? Well, if I'm standing here, I am one, two, three, so my number here will be three. How about if I'm standing here? My number will be one, two. What if I'm standing here? That'll be negative 0.5. What if I'm standing here? That'll be one, two, two and a half. So it'd be ne negative two and a half because it's on the left side. What, I'm, what if I'm standing here? That'll be negative two. What if I'm standing here? That'll be negative one. What if I'm standing here? That'll be negative three. You know what I mean? What if I'm standing here? That'll be 1.5. You see these, you see these green numbers. You see these green thick numbers. These thick green numbers that I've circled with red, guys. These are z scores. That's right. These are what z scores are. So you see, I told you what a z score is without even telling you what it is. So that's a z score. So so a z score of like. 2 here, what does that mean about the data value at that point? It means that the data value at this point, which is 130, happens to be 2 standard deviation away from the mean. And that's what the z-score tells you. So if a data value has a z-score of 5.7, what does that mean? That means this data value, whatever it is, whatever the experiment is, is 5.7, almost 6 standard deviations away from the average, which makes it an extremely unusual data value, which is exactly the next topic of what's called usual unusual values. And one of the things you could do with the z-score is that remember that if you find a z-score for a number, for a data, from a data set, if that z-score happens to be between minus 2 and 2, then you say that data value is usual. And if it's less than negative 2 and greater than 2, then you say it's unusual. So that's another application of z-scores. So basically, if I draw a number line here for the z-scores alone, and that's the z-axis, and that's 0, and that's 2, and that's minus 2, then the way it actually plays out is that all the values in here, all the z-values, that's not good, let's use another color, all the z-values between minus 2 and 2, these are any z-value in here, will be considered a usual z-value or a usual data value. And if you calculate the z-value for a data value and it happens to be outside negative 2 and outside 2 here, then these are unusual data values. So if a data value has a z-score that's greater than 2 or less than 2, then that's unusual. If a data value has a z-score of between minus 2 and 2, then it's usual. 
And how would you know that? Well, you need to find a z-score for whatever the number is. And if you go back to the beginning, you see the formula for the z-score given to you here. So, the, so you know what it is now. And how do you calculate it? Well, the formula is uh, z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. That's the formula for the z-score. Where x is the data value that you are investigating. Mu is the mean of the population. And sigma is the standard deviation of the population. So if I just give you an example, if I say, you know, let's say that, uh, I don't know, there's a, there's a GPA, one of you guys has a GPA of 3.7. Now you know that in your college, uh, based on the report from the administration, you know that the average GPA for the college you have is, for the college you're attending is 2.6 for the whole population, and the standard deviation is 0.34. So let's say this is the information that you are given. And they're asking you if, if based on this information that your school has, if your GPA is 3.7, is it usual or unusual? Basically, is your GPA usual or are you just way too advanced and you, you just your GPA is unusual based on the statistics in your college? Well, as you recall, I need to find the z-score, and if it's between minus two and two, I'll say your GPA is usual. And But if your GPA is less than minus two or greater than two, then I'll say, then you, you're far away from the average enough to be considered unusual. Of course, hopefully you are here when it comes to GPAs. That's a better unusual than to be here. Ha ha ha. Anyway, so let's, let's come here and let's calculate the z-score for my GPA. So the z-score for my GPA is x minus mu over sigma which is quite simple, that's just 3.7, uh, which is x, minus 2.6, and then you divide it by sigma, which is 0.34. And remember, you have to do the top first and then subtract it from, uh, from the denominator. Otherwise, you'll have issues with the order of operation. So if you go to Excel and say equals parentheses, 3.7 minus 2.6, close parentheses, and then divide by 0.34, you get 3.24. And the command in Excel, this is what you type, literally, in the box in Excel. You type equals parentheses 3.7 minus 2.6, literally like that, slash 0.34, and then you get that number there. And since 3.24 is greater than 2, you see 3.24, if I were to look at this grid here, falls here. So you see it's outside the 2 range. So therefore, your GPA, which was 3.7, is an unusual GPA. So therefore, your GPA is unusual since your z-score is 3.24, and that's greater than 2. So that's how you calculate a z-score, and that's how you could tell based on the z-score that the information the z-score gives you you could determine if a data value in any given experiment, as long as you have the mean and the standard deviation, you could always figure out if that data value is usual or unusual using its z-score. And that's how you utilize it. Uh, this is its scale, and uh, this is actually what it is. Thank you.